Hey guys, it's Rachel and welcome back to my channel. Alright, we're gonna do a get ready with me this morning. Well, it's morning when I'm getting ready. And today we're gonna talk about something that's like a little more personal and a little more heavy that at least I think it is. Something that is really close and near and dear to my heart that I wanted to share with you all. What I'm gonna kinda talk about is a little bit of background on like my mental health journey and what I have done tips and tricks to my for myself to kind of become better at who I am as a person. Now, this is not going to be in place of sound medical advice. So do not take this as me being your therapist. This is just me and what I went through. And I know that going through a lot of things, getting on YouTube and listening to other people talk about some of the stuff that they've done has really, really helped me. So I'm gonna have links in the description box down below for help and some channels that I think helped me through a really difficult time in my life. I'm not gonna go into like a lot of details about how other people affected me and drama and things like that. I think that that's kind of unfair considering they might see this or somebody they know might see this. So I'm gonna keep them out of it. I'm just gonna talk personally about my my side of the street here. Unbeknownst to me, I have had anxiety and bouts of depression since I was a teenager. I've had insomnia and problems sleeping since I was about 14 years old. And I didn't understand then that I had problems with anxiety and depression. I was kind of in the mindset of you're kind of stuck like Chuck, just get over it. You know, like a lot of people do. I needed help and I didn't even know I needed help. Like I couldn't sleep. I'd be going days without sleep. I would drive around town just because I couldn't sleep at all. And that had a lot to do with the situation that I was living in at the time and the people that I was living with at the time. I didn't think I had a, uh, another option. And honestly, at the time, I don't know if I really did. And when you're young and naive, you don't really know that you've got other options. I didn't get anything really starting to take care of the situation until I was in my early 20s and I had gotten my first job, moved away from everybody I knew. I, I, I stepped back and started to see things a little differently than what I was kind of, you know, raised in and indoctrinated in. And I remember the reason why I finally got help. I had been s sort of seeing this guy for a little while. And I found out some stuff about him, basically, that sent me down, like, I had a panic attack, let's just put it that way. I had a panic attack at school, my first year of teaching, and it was really, really hard. I was teaching in a school with kids that I was unfamiliar with and I wasn't handling it very well. So I went to the doctor and she put me on some anti-anxiety and antidepressants and um, sleep medicine, it was like a combination of like all three. And that, that really, really helped. Getting on that medication at the time that I did was the best decision I made for myself at the time. I was on that for like six years and I went off of that medicine in order to start trying to conceive. That is where my my journey into boundaries started. I'm gonna carve out my brows just because I, I like it better this way. Trying, trying, te trying to conceive started around there. So I was off my in my meds, which I had been on forever. Around that time, I, st I started to n see a therapist because I, 
I was having tr I was having trouble with with my mental health because I I was trying to have a baby. Long story short, a lot of people that I I had in my life, I wasn't able to tell them no, and I needed to. If you've ever tried to have a baby and it hasn't like happened right away, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Hang on, I'm gonna finish this and I'll be right back. I need to concentrate. All right, that's done. So. What I ended up doing was seeing seeing a therapist, which was the best decision that I ever ended up making. And we were discussing setting boundaries and doing what I needed to do to be mentally healthy. What I would like to do is to share with you a few things that I did in generic terms, but also some what I would like to mostly do is to share with you some things that I learned along the way. It's been a over a little over a year that I've been on this mental health journey for myself and I want to tell you some little nuggets that I think really really helped me and where I ended up. The first thing I want to talk about was something that really resonated with me, I'll say that. It was I'm going to be reading off of things that I've I have on my on my phone here, but it's why you don't set boundaries. So why didn't I set boundaries with people? Telling people no, I can't do that. Why wouldn't I tell them no? Why, why can't I just say no to people? Which is the whole point. Something interrupted me, so I had to go back and find out where I was. I did my foundation without knowing that I wasn't filming. So anyway, what I was saying, why don't you set boundaries? I said, fear of what others think. I grew up in a very Southern religious Christian community and house. As such, I think women, women, and this, this is my opinion, if you disagree with me, that's fine, but I am allowed to have this opinion and I am allowed to share it. Women are expected to be this shining beacon of hope and comfort and sweetness, and especially where I come from, um, just outright saying no is horrible. You don't do that. You would be seen as a terrible, person who doesn't follow religious doctrine because Jesus says this and Jesus says that and you just can't do it. Now you can you can be the person to overstep the mark and ask things you shouldn't be asking all day long but you can't be the one to say no. That is a no-no. And I didn't want other people to think and I'm about to swear here, but that I was a bitch. That's like the worst thing ever. To be seen as a bad person. My biggest fear with overexerting myself is that people will think I'm a terrible person. Uh, another one is assuming others will be mad. So I don't say, I didn't say no to people because I, th I assume they're going to be angry with me. And if somebody else is angry with me, then I assume I did something wrong. That's the bottom line. Other people's opinion of who I am is more, is more important than my own. I had absolutely no foundation of who I was as a, a person. I had no confidence that I was a good person. And my therapist actually asked me one time, and he said, if everybody else in the entire world thought you were terrible, would you think you were a good person? And I said, no. And he says, really? That's interesting. Well, if everybody thinks I'm bad, aren't I bad? And he says, no. It's not true. Like, lightning bolts from heaven. Okay, so it's more about what I think than what others think. It is okay for others to be angry with you. Even if they're justified. Like, if maybe you had 
a, a, a situation like I did growing up, like you're so terrified of people being upset with you. So there's another reason why I didn't say no to people. Um, I think it's not that important. Thinking that my my needs are not as important as others. You don't want the hassle. I didn't want the hassle of confrontation. It's a lot of work. Avoiding conflict, like I said. I know a lot of people want to avoid confrontation because they're, a, they're afraid of other people's reactions and where it could probably lead. Prefers to go with the flow, which I think is a, all the other reasons why I think why do people want to go with the flow? They don't want the hassle. Uh, fear of being selfish. That is a big one. I need to actually put on some makeup. I had a horrible time thinking if you say no to somebody, they're going to think you're selfish. If somebody asks you to do something and you say no, they're going to think you're selfish. And being selfish, like we said, is horrible. It makes you a horrible person. It makes you terrible. And Jesus says, you know, not to do that. He, there, people will end up quoting the Bible a lot. If you are from the kind of situation I am to, to manipulate you to, to do what they want you to do. Does that make sense? If you tell me, no, you're being selfish and Jesus says not to be selfish. Or maybe it's not religious. Maybe it's. Just that, you know, don't be selfish. Are you really selfish if you if you don't have the mental energy to dog sit for the weekend? Come on. And then you don't know where to start. So you don't set boundaries because you just don't know how. And that's that that's the biggest one, I think. Is you don't really know where to start, and neither did I. So what were some things that helped me out in learning to have a better mental health priority? Some of the things that I ended up seeing, a, a lot of things on a lot of books and a lot of things on Pinterest were really helpful. Something that I continually said to myself, I came up with this on my own and it's really been my mantra for the last year and a half, is obligation is just an illusion. I'm going to say that again for you. Obligation is just an illusion. It doesn't exist unless you say it does. I'm not obligated. I don't care who you are. I am not obligated to do anything. I choose to do things. Now, there are consequences if I don't follow through on some obligations that society thinks for me. For example, if I cheat on my husband, I was, I'm obligated not to do that. Does that mean I don't, I can't? No, technically I can, but there will be consequences for those actions. I am obligated to take care of this baby that I'm about to deliver. If I don't, there will be consequences. Okay. But there's nobody around me making me do anything. So if you feel obligated to somebody and you're going to do something, you don't want to do it, but you feel obligated, you, that's a boundary that's been crossed that you need to say no to. Something that I came to the realization of. That's hard to do at first, I think. There's a little quote here I want to read to you. It says, not setting boundaries to avoid upsetting people doesn't make you a good or loving person. Ouch, right? Like, isn't that what, especially girls, like, isn't that what we're taught? Oh, no, it's fine. Not a big deal. I'll do it. Even though you don't want to or you don't have time, like, over giving and doing things for other people makes you better. It makes you awesome. It makes you the best person on the planet and it that's a lie that is a lie it makes you someone who feels hurt and drained and unsafe and running on empty you shouldn't have to sacrifice what you need in order to demonstrate your care for someone the right people won't want you to ignore your self-care for the sake of making them more comfortable 
The right people will want you to take care of yourself. They may not always understand your boundaries, but they will respect them. If you set a boundary and it makes someone uncomfortable or angry, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have the boundary. It doesn't mean your needs are wrong or that you should retract and say, yes, at the end of the day, your self-care is more important than other people's comfort. Their comfort and self-care are important too, and it's not wrong to want to make shifts to accommodate both. But if you have to ignore what you need in order to maintain the connection, it's not the right person. I don't care who it is. I don't care what their relationship is to you. They have no right to demand your time like that. If they don't understand, they're not, unless they're children, then they're not the right person for you. Ouch, right? <laughs> I'm going to be using the Soft Glam Palette today on my eyes. Um, also, something that really helped me out, it says everyone doesn't need access to you. Some people are draining and they don't even know it. You're allowed to say no, you're allowed not to answer calls, you're allowed to break plans, and if you need to save yourself, do it. Holy cow, like what, what am I talking about here? I'm talking crazy talk, aren't you? You're gonna, you think it's okay to break plans, Rachel? You think it's okay to, to, to like back out on stuff? That's a hard one. But I have a tendency and, and I've started to take this into account. I have a rule that I have in implemented is that when somebody asks me to do something, I will say, I'll think about it or give me 48 hours. I, I have stopped saying automatically, yes, of course, of course I will. And I've started to say, I'll think about it, which at first when people weren't used to me doing that, it kind of took them by surprise. And it kind of made them mad. And there's another quote that says that you're going to piss a lot of people off when you start doing what's best for you. And that is true. If you have been a person who has always said yes to someone, to everyone, and you start saying no, people aren't going to understand. And people are going to be like, wait, what? What is going on and who are you? And that's okay. That is okay, because here's the thing. If someone gets mad at me for mm, saying no to something, if someone starts to badmouth me behind my back because I didn't do what they wanted or something that they've gone around and, and told everybody I'm a terrible person. If the people who are listening to this, one, why, my question is, why are they comfortable coming to you to talk about me? And two, if you really think that that is true, if you think that I'm a selfish, mean person because I said no to somebody else, then you don't know me at all. You don't know me well at all. And if you don't know me that well, then why... Why do I care? Why do I care what you think? Because I've actually known who you are for like 20 years? Okay. But if you really think I'm this terrible person who's selfish and immature and only thinks of herself based on the opinion or the story from somebody else without talking to me first, then you don't know me and your opinion of me has no place in my, my life. I know me. My husband knows me. People who I love, and they know me. So even if you're a family member of mine and you've known me my whole life, but somebody else comes to you and says something that's unflattering and you, you just form an opinion about me based on one thing and you don't know me, then you don't well, that's what I mean. You don't, you don't really, you don't spend enough time with me to know that, that that's not true. And that's hard, especially if it's people you love who have a, who, who you're afraid to ruffle feathers with. That's hard. I understand that. With that being said, I had to let go of control over what people thought about me whether they thought I was a good person or or not 
I can't control what they think. I can try and manipulate what they think, but I can't control what they think. They're allowed to have their opinion and I'm allowed to have mine. So if I say, nope, I can't do that, they and they think that I'm a terrible person, well, okay. Nice, nice to see ya. We're not simpatico. I will be cordial to you if you're, you know, under the right circumstances, but you're not my people. So some of the tips that I've come across otherwise, <laughs> one, don't accept gifts or favors from people who attach strings to everything. If you know a person is wants to give you something, but you have a sneaking suspicion that they're going to use it as a something against you later, don't accept it. So if somebody gives you like a present, a gift, I want to give you whatever. But then you know out of personal experience with this person that later down the line, they're going to be like, well, I gave you this. So you ought to let me come over because I gave this to you. Okay. Don't accept a gift from somebody who's going to do that. Or if they are offering to do you a favor, if they're going to bring it up later with you, don't take the favor. Don't do it. So when you say no, for example, if somebody wants to come in from out of town to see you and you don't really want to do that at the time, it's not a good time, or you just don't want to entertain or what have you, just an example. If you tell them, no, now's not a good time, you don't have, don't argue. Don't offer up excess explanation. Just say, no, now's not a good time. If they keep going, just, I'm sorry, but now's not a good time. I'll, I'll let you know. There you go again. I'll let you know. I'll let you know when a good time is. If they continue to, if they continue to press you about when this thing that they want from you can be done and they don't say I'll let you know that if that doesn't work just say I'll think about it I'll get back to you and when people will keep pressing you for stuff in the conversation just say I gotta go thank you very much but I've got to go the first time that you do that to someone especially somebody that you're afraid of the repercussions or their opinion or their what they're gonna think of you it's gonna be scary it's gonna be hard but it's gonna get easier it, it really will something that I've also wrote down is you cannot both set a boundary and take care of another person's feelings if it comes down between you and them you need to choose you does that sound selfish yep is it selfish maybe is it that okay yes that is. I'm gonna put my liner mascara on and I'll be right back. So where I was when I started having panic attacks, being depressed, I, 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 I had no net between myself and other people. I didn't know who I was as a person because I had never allowed myself to delve into that. This whole year of me doing a no buy and, and budget has really opened up a lot of doors for me to explore who I am and what I, I really think of myself. I think I've gone from a person who says yes because I think I'm nice, that makes me nice, to someone who thinks about it 
before saying yes, but I know that I'm nice. Does that make any sense? If you have trouble with kind of anything like this in your life, I would encourage you to see a professional about it. If you're having anxiety, if you're having depression, talk therapy and even medication is something that is a door that's open to you. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I am not a medical professional, so don't take my word as gospel. But I can tell you that for me, it really helped. And starting to tell people no without feeling guilty has improved my mental health like leaps and pounds. I can't even explain to you how much that has helped out. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover for today. I might do more of these kinds of videos in the future. I'm not sure. I'm talking about, you know, mental health things that I go through and things that I've done to improve myself. If you have questions, go ahead and leave them below. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe before you leave and I will catch you later.